Hello. Hi, is that Vanessa? Yes, it is. Hi. Hi, Vanessa. It's Jason Curtis speaking. Hi, Jason. Okay. Um, I know you're short on time, and you're off to Japan, so we'll 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 keep this short and sweet, shall we? Sure. Okay, um, Vanessa. First of all, you enjoyed phenomenal success at uh, at a relatively young age. Um, how did you actually handle that success, and do you think it was uh, it, it it was a good thing or a bad thing? Okay, well, it's true that I started my career at a, you know, pretty young age, in the age of 11, 12, first class, and being there from age 15, more than top of the rock the violence I am. Yeah. But I think that, no, I mean, I think it happened at a pace that I was happy with, really. And um, the amount of things that I've done until now, um, I see as experience so that I can, you know, venture into more and more things into the future. But, um... I think that it was a good thing in that it wasn't something that just happened overnight and that I, I didn't understand, if you know what I mean. Right. From the age of 11, I was kind of used to interviews and, and concerts and recording, but that was, that was at a classical level. Mm. And that was fun, and it was something that I felt that I was ready for. But when it happened with um, with the Violent Fair album, mm. uh, when it became much more of a manic, hectic, what's the whole busy lifestyle, um, I just felt that this was something that I believed in my music, and it's true that I took a risk with the Violent Fair album going in a new direction, but it was great to know that there were so many, you know, two and a half million people out there who bought the Violent Fair album mm. um, who really you know felt like to me that the Violent was capable so much so mm. I just felt you know grateful and it was a rewarding experience to know that not only did I enjoy my music but you know maybe other people out there did too mm, mm, mm. and tell us about about the new album Storm um, obviously sort of the selection of the tracks and so on um, how did you actually go about putting the album together well, it took about a year. Uh, we started work about Christmas last year. And in doing making the album, I've been getting in and out, you know, of uh, concert tours, like Mexico, Scandinavia, different places. So it's a question of my producer and myself sort of organizing our timetables. But while we were making it, I think the key thing was that we enjoyed it and had a great, you know, time together making it. Um, he was my co-writer, too. And so I just thought that I wanted to take the violin there one step further. You know, the violin there wrote new... Um, barriers and both new ground for me as a violinist, for sure. violin in general, and also for people out there. But this one, I, I wanted to explore even more eclectic uh, mixtures of music yes. to, um, to make it more daring, I think. Um, and to just, you know, I just wanted to reflect what I am right. at the moment, you know, what stage I am in my career musically. Mm. And I think it, it, it really shows off a lot of things on the violin. Um, the last few years touring all around the world, 30 countries, I think, subconsciously, consciously, I've managed to put those things into this album. Um, the different influences, the concert experience. And so it was just a joy to be able to do from one track something really ultra cool uh, and sort of acid jazzy, like retro, and then go to the other scale things and using my violin, really like an electric guitar, which I couldn't use that much on the violin pair album. So yes. more effects like on Hocus Pocus and then singing for the first time, like I do love. And then a sort of more, just discovering more of my roots, like in a Chinese um, inspired track for the Unification concert, which was happy Valley. So it was, it was a lot of Right, and um, obviously you started in the classical arena, and you moved across, obviously into 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 a wider area, is the same in 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 the world of pop music. Anyway, um, where where are you actually happiest? Do you are you happiest doing the traditional, rather the classical, or do do you find the sort of pop genre more exciting? Um, in terms of excitement level, I think both. Um I guess it's exciting, but in different ways, you know. Um, I always say that I wake up in different moods and I feel like playing a different kind of music. And both areas, I don't think I'm mutually exclusive. So that's why I think I've been enjoying um, uh, having a parallel careers, you know. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, 
Yeah, the band said, I'm in, come here, Castle album one, and then now another pop album, and then you probably sort of read somewhere that I'm probably on the buyer, that next year I have um, a, what's it called, a Castle album at the Chinese Girls. Yes, yes. So I really enjoy having the liberty and the freedom in my life at this stage, and I hope forever to be doing what I want when I want to. It's really great. But in terms of respect for music, I have a different kind of respect for both kinds. When I'm playing Castle, I'm more of an interpreter, I have a sort of sense of responsibility and respect for a composer um, and I'm just a medium through which other people can enjoy some of these works mm-hmm. and make sure I'm important and my interpretation really matters but mm-hmm. in pop music I have a chance to, to be an artist to, to not just be the light that shines on the painting but to be the painter itself mm-hmm. and that's really really cool mm-hmm. because do you and I think just going sorry mm-hmm. I think just going out as a child of the 90s even though I was teaching classical music position mm-hmm. um, I just feel natural you know listening to Michael Jackson one day from Canada the DC and so I just wanted to have that feeling in my professional side. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you think that um, actually um, sort of the aim of, of, of your rendition of, say, uh, a lot of the classics um, has made it or have made those classics more accessible, say, to, to a younger or a new audience? For sure. I mean, that's not my ultimate objective um, to sort of bring classical music to everybody. Um, but that would make me really, really happy because, you know, I'm somebody who is kind of quite young, um, 18, and I think that if I can like cast the one in and pop, then everybody out there has that potential to like it too. Mm. But it's not like I have a hidden agenda through my pop record to bring things to castles. It's just that through my castle records, if some of my pop fans want to cross over with me back to the past and enjoy something from hundreds of years ago, that makes me incredibly, you know, happy. That's mm. a really rewarding experience to know that like me, they feel that the violin is a really first challenge, but it's not just confined to not, not just confined to classical, but to all those things. And often, I see a lot of pop fans in my straight classical concert. And mm. um, I mean, obviously, there's a wide mix of people in the fusion or Persian sure. songs. But when I do straight classical, it's great to see a lot of people who already been to the pop concert mm. but they've got all their sort of red hot pop T-shirts on. Yeah, yeah. That's sort of thing. Right, right. And and have you been criticised at all? Um, you know, by by sort of the old school that you sort of messing with tradition in the sense of uh, taking, you know, I mean, you've you know, you've taken some, you know, some tracks that obviously are hundreds of years old and uh, sort of given them a new lease of life. Uh, have you ever had anyone sort of saying, but you know, um, it should be played in its traditional form and not sort of beefed up and that kind of thing? Yeah. Well, the thing is that um, I feel that I'm just carrying on the, the tradition of violinists, which is. You know, Pagani used to take general folk songs and, and transcribe them into his own music. And mm. Pagani, for instance, wrote Three Summer Two Before, but Randonoff did a version for piano. So that kind of thing is passing on a piece to, from one generation to another, one artist to another, um, has been going for a long time. And do your own rendition mm. of it is something that I see as a real tradition. Mm. And in terms of opinions from people in the classical world who are worthy of respect. You know, yes, yes. Opinions and criticisms will come from all areas, but I only take them, um, yeah, sure, I'm humble if it's from people I respect. Um, otherwise, I just don't pay attention to them. And, you know, all the conductors, fellow violinists um, in the classical world, both friends, people who I've never met for the first time, who are really, you know, very, very well regarded in, in the classical world, um, as well as music pieces and I think that tells you a lot about you know who enjoys the music that I, I produce is that music teachers who are producing a whole new generation of little violin pieces feature or music mm. are all really great fans and supporters mm. which is nice I mean not just on my classical stuff but yeah if when I do a rendition of say Summer um, it was just inspired by Vivaldi or to cut a few inspired by Bach mm. um, they're, they're just incredibly supportive they say it's great that you're you're bringing new things to music and um, you dare to do something different and as a result you know, there's so many young people who aspire to be you know, a little violinist that's a great to mm. that little violinist and, and school teachers mm. and um, mm. I'm really excited about the whole project right right and if there was sort of a single aspect of your career that you enjoy the most which which aspect would you say it was um, well I think playing live you know I love recording I think this album was a lot of fun recording. Mm. Um, 
every time she, she you know, she do another she pop out. Mm. I think Harry does bring more needs where um, I have to balance her. But I think out of all the things that I do in, in my career, it's playing live. Because mm. people have a chance to see me on TV or read about me or hear my records at home. But when I go to that country and we get a connection with the audience and I get a chance to breathe, um, you know, a great vibe from them. Mm. It's just great to see them enjoying enjoying the music live in person. Mm -hmm. And will you be touring, uh, touring this album at all, sort of going to any new territories and so on? Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's, it's released next month, well, this month, I think, uh, October 27th, and yeah. then from then on, I mean, uh, I'm in Japan, and then next month I'm going to America and Germany, so it's a lot of testing about it, but mainly for promotion, interviews, and um, TV shows, and launching the album, but then a real world tour is planned for kind of spring, summer next year. Mm -hmm. Great, great. And will that sort of be big stages, or, or will you be sort of playing uh, smaller stages, do you think? I can hear that one. Thing. So, um, do you intend to sort of play um, in, in uh, big arenas, or will it be more sort of intimate, uh, smaller venues? Yeah, well, on the last tour, it was more few thousand venues, but then something like in Mexico, I played like a nine, ten thousand stadium, mm. and it depends on on the town and the place. Um, in America, we were playing slightly smaller venues, but a lot of places. You know, mm. America's big place, so like lots and lots of cities. Um, but um, on this one, I, I'm not sure yet because we have to we have to start planning the tour basically. Sure. And see what kind of tour I want to do um, predominantly because you know when I come out to do a classical tour, I sometimes see very different um, mm. arenas from pop tour. So we'll have to look at it. And see sure. Sure. I mean, there are one of concerts where I do like rock festival, 70,000 people, or part of a rock festival, or a one of concert, which is 100,000 people, but um, that's, you know, a big show, sure. technically something really special, but um, I had to look into that next for Great, great. Vanessa, thanks very much for your time. As you say, those are my questions. Okay, okay. But uh, so, congratulations. I just have a, an advanced copy of the album, and uh, so I think it's going to do some good things here, and hopefully, based on that, we can, uh, we can get you out to South Africa at some point. Yes, I look forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye now.